Hey everybody, Dr. Rob Silverman here, obviously on Facebook Live. I am responding to a whole bunch of requests. I have a whole bunch of requests from prospective patients, patients, and followers. They wanted to know, what do you do inside your office and what should I expect from a manual therapist or a non-medical doctor? Because, you know, obviously you have followers that are not in the New York area or the Westchester County area. So I was like, guys, chapter eight of Inside Out Health, a revolutionary approach to your body has all the different treatment techniques that I recommend and I suggest people seek out in their doctor who could conceivably allow us to reach clinical outcome. So real simply, once again, inside out out treatments, number one, joint manipulation, adjustment. Yes, I know there's been a lot of things going around in adjustment and is adjustment good for you or not. So let's get right to it. As far as chiropractic is concerned, US World News just ran an article and said it's the most effective means of for musculoskeletal healing and musculoskeletal outcome. Not just effective, PT was also effective in this study, but also more effective for dollar and cents. So therefore, if you have any kind of musculoskeletal injury, not just back, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, wrist, elbow, and the like, chiropractic, a qualified chiropractor, is your choice to go to unequivocally. With that being said, make sure that they have specific joint manipulation or adjustment techniques that they're very comfortable with. I'm a big proponent. I tell everybody, I practiced for 17 years. That's a decent amount of time. So I've gone through different types of technique trainings, force, non-force techniques, and I recommend it. Joint manipulation works beautifully for those people that have gone through a screening and it's a proper technique to use. What are you really doing is opening up the joint, allowing more mobility, sending what we call mechanoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, basically speaking to your brain and allowing you to have an outcome that is outstanding. It is without question one of the chiropractor's key ingredients and the differentiation from other practitioners. is something that we do and we can hang our hat on, and when it's done, and done appropriately, on a patient that's been screened for it, you know, it's that Star Spangled Banner moment, if you will, and I am not just an adjustment chiropractor, as you all know. Number two, Graston Technique, or what I really like, what's come out of the Graston Technique is factor. My friend, Dr. Tom Hyde, a mentor, a Hall of Fame chiropractor, big kudos to Dr. Tom Hyde, is one of the creators of Factor. And here's the tool. So Graston used to have a ton of tools and they're great, nothing wrong with them, but what I've liked that Tom has done with Factor and now Todd Riddle is that they made one tool. And what it does is you're enabling yourself to run over the specific area. So number one, it does mechanical stimulation to fascia. As of the Harvard Gazelle in January of 2016, we found that mechanical, skill, mechanical stimulation was as effective in some instances as like PRP. So I like any kind of release of fascia. Fascia, the saran wrap of your body. It is that, if you will, the salmon and that white film over the salmon. And when you cut up the salmon, the fascia is on the inside or as my wife likes to say, a great depiction of what fascia is, is when you pull the skin on a chicken off the meat and you see that white stuff and you gotta cut it, that's fascia. One aside, the number one thing that you lose when you get surgery, the surgeons love to remove the fascia. That's your tensegrity. That's what keeps you all tight together. So with that being said, a very, it is not, you're not gonna bruise. You're not gonna blow up. You're just rubbing it over a particular area and you're gonna have specific movements. So you're gonna rub, you're gonna rub with movement, you're gonna rub with movement and resistance, and you're gonna rub through modern movements, whether it's your everyday activities of daily living and or if you're an athlete through athletic movements, and it's gonna enable you to break up the fascia and muscle adhesion. It's truly based on um, Cyrex um, transverse friction massage in that we're looking to break up adhesions and get fibroblastic proliferation leading to collagen synthesis. Instrument assisted tools and techniques are not a wave of the future, they're the wave of now. And they've been out for the last 15 years and I'm a big proponent of them. Posture assessment, posture is a shadow of movement. Posture is a shadow of movement. So I love 
to have a patient walk in. I just had a patient come in today and I said to her, right knee. And she looked at me and she's like, I can't believe you're looking at how I walk. And I'm like, of course I'm looking how you walk. Who you are, how you stand, and how you move is gonna be indicative of all the injuries and everything that's happened, or the compensations that has occurred in your life. So I can, so your body is gonna tell me things that your mind and mouth won't remember and elucidate to me. So I'm gonna look at you, posture is a shadow of movement. Now within that posture, which is static, I'm also gonna put you through different movement screens, because movement is life. What's the difference between a live person and a dead person? A live person wakes up and moves. A movement screen will make the invisible visible extremely quickly. And that is a great tool, because people usually try and see your chiropractor, it hurts, it hurts, all I care about is pain. Well, great, he who treats the side of pain is lost, and who only gauges pain is never gonna get a true clinical outcome. We wanna see how you move, because if you're moving the wrong way, if I'm trying to raise my shoulder like this, well, guess what, if it may not hurt, but clearly that movement pattern is aberrant and dysfunctional and will lead down a road of injury. So posture will lead into a functional movement assessment. For you docs who want a little bit more information, feel free to go to my website. I have a functional movement assessment that's available for everybody. So posture leading to functional movement assessment. Kinesio taping, the form of tape that I like, that I found to be the most effective, which leaves no residue, and I really have had virtually no redness, is the TheraBand Kinesio tape. I happen to like that a lot. To me, it's a finishing touch on a lot of different things. There's 500 nerve cells per square inch of skin. Your skin attaches with your fascia, which now makes it the largest organ in your body. And because it attaches to fascia, it's the only organ that attaches all the systems in the body. So you can get a real great pay for play, if you will, by putting the TheraBand tape on and you're getting a 24 seven non-painful feed to your brain, non-painful stimuli to your brain, non-painful response. So if you put it on, you'll also feel a little bit of the skin lifting and all the gunk, the exudates, the toxins under will flow away, the limbs will take care of it. Love it. By the way, docs, you wanna know what I like about it? People talk about it. It was just at the 2008 Olympics, the 2012 Olympics, and once again at the 2016 Olympics. Flexion, distraction, decompression. It's in the other room. I can't, I'm not mobile enough right now to go walk, but I found that decompression or inflection distraction therapy is a great tool to open up joint spaces in the lumbar spine and get a little imbibition and get those discs to heal. Movement in the joint is a key element to overall joint health. Remember, joints should be moved, they should be used, they should not be abused. So decompression is a great choice, and flexion distraction decompression is a great choice for lower back injuries. We're getting a lot of great clinical outcomes. Rehab exercises, we have a plethora, I use web exercises, there's 1,500 exercises in web exercises. So here, I could use this. This is just core. I simply print it out. I like what I see. Six exercises and I give my patients the six different core exercises. In addition to these rehab exercises, that actually was core. We've got little things here. We got perform better and we've got little bands. These little bands are great. You can give it. It's like $2 to the doctor. Give it to the patient and you guys can go on my um, Website, see a whole bunch of articles that talk about exercises for ankle sprain and knee and the like. These are critical elements. I know everybody goes on the internet and gets their degree from the University of Google and Dr. Google, and that's great. The problem is it's not individualized and pointed for you. So that's why I always tell you, go to your chiropractor, go to your practitioner, and let him or her individualize it for you, if you will. So that's my strong suggestion. They don't even know I'm doing Facebook Live in that call, mm -hmm. and I hope it's not my mom. Anyway, so I'm going to put these down. Once again, they come in different colors, etc. And then the CLX made by TheraBand, real great choice. I love the CLX because you can do a multitude of things, but the number one exercise that I like is I like to put it in here. And here we go. Keep my elbows nice and tight. And Bruger. And I'm doing scapular retraction, trying to stimulate my scapula 
musculature. So there's a ton of things that you can do. You can go on their website and see all the, uh, the, all the different techniques that you can do with this. I'm gonna skip one and go right to core strengthening. I got my little handy dandy spine. By the way, this guy went through chiropractic school with me. His name is Romeo. <laughs> Romeo was great because Romeo never talked. Romeo did everything he had to. Nevertheless, core. I want to make some points. You see that? That looks like it's right in your abdomen area. That's your psoas, that's your hip flexor muscle. So all those sit-ups and all those leg raises that you guys do that, you feel, I feel that burn. You're tightening up your hip flexor. Watch what happens when you tighten your hip flexor. I turn the spine, ready? Your hip flexor gets tight, you do everything, boom. Oh man, my low back hurts. Look at those joints, boom. Once again, boom. So you clearly don't want to do that. In addition, you're not only working your psoas, let's say when you do a sit-up, look where you're bending, lumbar spine. Lumbar spine, lumbar spine, leg raises, leg raises. So core rehab, some of the more important things in core rehab, the brace like we talked about in a previous Facebook Live. Understand, here's a concept, two big takeaways. Core, number one, it's the anti-mover. You shouldn't be rotating in core. You shouldn't be lateral flexing. You shouldn't be flexing. You shouldn't be extending. Your core is not supposed to move. It's supposed to hold tight so you can move your periphery. Usain Bolt, when he runs, he's not moving his core. He's moving his legs. He's moving his arm. So that's number one. The core is the anti-mover. Number two with the core, what's interesting, after any injury, your brain shuts off your intrinsic core muscles, which supply support to hold your spine in place. If your spine muscles or your intrinsic core muscles, which go, sorry about that, right around here, hold that in place, shut off, 20 pounds of force, your spine caves in, and the patient says to the doctor, my back just gave away and I don't understand why. So those are the two big takeaways. Once again, do your rehab exercises for core, a critical element. Make sure that those static bracing ones are the ones to start, and later you get onto some movement ones. The only time where you're really thrusting is what we call the transverse plane, which is the obliques, and that's where your power is in your core. Skipped over nerve flossing. Really hard to show you nerve floss. Uh, I like to do it on somebody else. I have a video coming out in January on nerve flossing. Nerves glide and slide through structures and muscles. Nerves glide and slide. Think of a nerve like a spaghetti. Think of muscles like the tongs on a fork. In a perfect scenario, the nerve will glide and slide. The spaghetti will go through the tongs of a fork and you have no neural tension, no nerve impingement, if you will. However, if that spaghetti is now more, like my friend used to say, mushad, mushy, <laughs> puffed up, it's going to click on the tongs of the fork and you're going to have some neural tension. You're going to have some nerve issues. Now, if the tongs are tight and it grabs your spaghetti, the nerve, you're also going to get it. So there's specific tests, neural tension tests, that will determine do you have any pull on the nerve? Those are not tests you can see in an MRI. Those are not tests that you see at an x-ray. Those are tests that you have to come to my office or somebody who's trained in this and see. And nerve flossing, it's like flossing your teeth. We all do it? Well, guess what? Sciatica, carpal tunnel. These are things that we can cure and help with nerve flossing. Any questions on that? Feel free to email me at info at drrobertsilverman.com. If you're on Facebook Live, everybody knows how to IM. Great, great, great choice. Finally, without any further ado, laser. Light amplification of stimulation emission of radiation. It is an acronym. My choice, clearly, laser therapy, a class two laser, or cornea laser. I got my little accelerator over here and I got my PL touch. Laser is based on Einstein's law of physics. Essentially, it is a non-coherent scattered light that's sent into the area that the body cell membrane absorbs. It absorbs and has a cascade going on in the body. That cascade ultimately leads to oxygenation, ATP, and neurotransmission. Cellular healing. You know a laser provides cellular healing if there's no heat. The heat comes from oscillation. I don't want to heat you. I want to heal you. Don't ever forget that. So cornea laser for me is the most versatile healthcare modality of the 21st century. One of the biggest problems that we have in medicine right now is we have 20th century thinking 
trying to fix 21st century problems. This is a 21st century tool for 21st century problems. Every good manual therapist should carry a laser. I'm doing a lot of concussion work with the laser, a lot of nerve involvement, a lot of healing, decreasing pain, and increasing range of motion. Strong suggestion, find a practitioner or use the Oconia laser, someone who has the Oconia laser. I didn't say it at the beginning. I'm waiting to say it at the end. If you like what you see, press share. Please, press share. You're not going to be able to help everybody else. For every one person that we touch, when I speak, the possibilities are helping 30,000 people down the line. So please press share. And if you like it, press like. John, we got any questions? Um, one question on laser. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you decide what type of patients you're going to use laser treatment with? Or okay. any specific symptoms? Sure. Well, um, contraindications, clearly, uh, anybody who's ever pregnant, you know, we can't do much with pregnant women, unfortunately. Um, contraindication would be somebody with a pacemaker. Symptomology, pain, decreased range of motion, nerve issues, skin healing, and the such. Any musculoskeletal faults, laser is going to be a great choice for. Okay, and um, with all these different types of treatment, how do you decide which to use on which patients? Great choice, and that's where the experience and the clinical outcome come comes from and that's why when I say that if everything is a nail you better pray that that if everybody if I sorry about this if the doctor only has a hammer you better pray the patient has a nail that's why you have to go to a doctor with a diverse toolbox to enable to get the best clinical outcome for you and individualize your treatment for what you need because it's all about you you the patient don't forget that it's looking at the systems not the symptom, it's making a collaboration and getting root cause resolution. That's it, how can they find you? Give me a buzz, 914-287-6464. Guys, don't forget, always yours in health, Dr. Rob.